Hi everyone, welcome to our, this month's episode of the Mental Health Series. And today with me, I am joined with these very amazing faces over here. Uh, my name is Susan, Susan Mwende. My pronouns are she, they. I work under Leha. And I will let the person on my far right introduce themselves, please. Hi, my name is Kai Audi, pronouns they, them. I work with Jin Siang, which I introduced Sounds like it. Okay. Jin <laughs> is an organization that is based in Kenya. That works, that works with intersex, transgender, and general and confirming persons in Kenya. So basically what we do with those three uh, thematic groups is that we provide safe spaces, psychosocial support. We also do research and advocacy to ensure that we create more spaces for this demographic. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Gathu. My pronouns are they, them. I work under Leha. It's an LBQ organization based in Kiambu County. It deals with education, health, advocacy, and economic empowerment. When we talk about health, we talk about everything dealing with STI screening, mental health. We talk about breast cancer screening, cervical cancer screening. We talk about economic empowerment. We talk about things that empower PMP people who do make money. This can include our recent uh, of candle making. Uh, advocacy comes where peer educators are linked between the organization and the peers on the ground, where we cascade information from the organization to the peers. Thank you. Thank you. Gonna... you. <laughs> <laughs> so, my name is Tanaka Maritim. My pronouns are he, him. I work in Agency Yangu as the mental health coordinator, and I'm also the focal person for trans persons in Agency Yangu. And I think my colleague has all, sorry. <laughs> I think my colleague has pointed out what Agency Yangu does. Um, and in my capacity, I am able to, as Gathu has said, connect the what we call ground, the IT agency persons called ground with the organization. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And with that said, I would honestly want to understand in your own context, what does mental health mean to you? I would start with you, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, mental health or mental illness? Mental illness. Mental illness, yeah. goddamn. <laughs> I mental illness to me is the state, and I'm speaking as a person who has that uh, a condition, is the state where you cannot really function as um, as every other citizen in the country. You cannot, you don't have the capacity to, you know, go with the day to day um, activities um, because of the condition that you have. Thank you. How about you, God? Uh, to me, mental illnesses are disorders that affect my mood, behavior, and everything that happens to do with my everyday life. Yes. You got it with your everyday life. life. Uh huh. Yes. Yes, and Just Kai. to reiterate what Tanaka and Gatu have said, mm -hmm. it's basically impair, like clinic clinically significant distress maybe or just conditions that impair your day-to-day -day performance. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. So within uh, this thing that is mental health is human rights. Like we all know like we are entitled to the highest attainable standard of health, right? And that does not exclude mental health. Tell us about what types are you, I will not start with you, I have already started with you so much. <laughs> Let me start from there. Uh, tell, um, tell us about a mental illness that you're conversant with. Mm, okay, mm, where do I start? Uh, okay, first of all, disclaimer. Yeah. Personally, I have not encountered or I haven't gone through, I do not experience much of the mental illnesses or disorders, but in my capacity as a community organizer, a safety and security responder, uh, or an a program within the intersex transgender and gender and conforming community. I've been able to interact with persons who go through this. And I think one, one of the common illnesses that I've encountered is depression, uh, anxiety mm -hmm. disorders, and of course, disorders related to drug and substance abuse. And of course, all of these are tied to structural 
factors, structural discrimination and violence that this particular community goes through. But uh, yeah, I'll let the people with the limited experience do the thing. Thank you. I will, I will come back to you for the structural uh, elements that contribute to it. Uh, how about you, Gadu? Um, I, have, I am a person living with PTSD, anxiety disorder, and clinical depression. Yes, uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. This happens when you uh, face a traumatic event in your past and it influences every other event that you face in your future. Oh, <clears throat> um, so I live with bipolar 1 disorder and I really don't like it when people say, oh my God, the weather is bipolar. <laughs> because, no, it's not. <laughs> Because w then the next question you'd ask is, what exactly is bipolar, right? Yeah, yeah. And my lived experience of what bipolar is would look like um, having elevated... So let me use my hands, yeah? Um, there is depression and then there's mania. So I kind of oscillate between the two. So we have heightened senses of depression and heightened senses of mania. What exactly is mania? Mania for me, because you know, bipolar is like um, your fingerprint. Um, and for me, mania looks like um, heightened speech. Like, it's basically like me rapping. For me, mania looks like, you know, hypersexuality. For me, mania is aggression. For me, mania, it's like a whole melee of issues where, you know, You'd see someone, and I think um, a lot of our communities, you, our society in general, usually says, "Oh, I'm saying it cheesy," you know, like the things that you do, the um, the beating up of people. I haven't gotten there yet, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but like the the things that you do would more or less be encompassed with the term that is erratic. Um, and when it comes to now the 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 next day, so we have the spectrum still. Yeah. So we have mania, and the next one is hypermania. Hypermania is like a less severe form of mania. Um, interacting with this when I knew what bipolar means. Before that, it was one of those things where people say, you know, I feel bipolar. I'm bipolar <laughs> today. The weather is bipolar. <laughs> so sometimes I think it takes interacting with people to be able to see what they go through. But it shouldn't be that really. Like I shouldn't have to walk in your shoes or see the shoes that you wear for me to be able to empathize with the person. I'm a believer of believe people when they tell you what they're going through and give them the support that they need. Yeah, so, yeah, what do you... That's actually yeah. amazing now right? that you brought it out, right? Like, um, you don't need to understand to respect, mm. yeah? You don't need to have a deep understanding of it to actually acknowledge. Because these are people your yeah. experience is unique to you i'm gonna respect that fully mm -hmm. i don't have to walk in that shoe i don't yeah. have to go through it for me to understand for me to respect what you're going through perfect yeah mm -hmm. um and on the sorry um on the on the depressive side because there's unipolar kind of unipolar depression and then there's also like the depression that comes with bipolar and most times like a lot of people just think it's just um the depression that other people go through but the depression that comes with bipolar um, for me usually goes from you know this is the spectrum this is what is standard and this is now the depression that we all know and are aware of and then the depression that i go through is like from zero to a hundred um i'm like yeah i'm really sad right now do anything, you know, the basic definition of de depression, but now it goes to a point where it gets to a suicidal, you know, the headspace, I get to a suicidal headspace. And I think um, a while ago, maybe like two months ago, we were at a retreat and I got an episode, a depressive episode, and I couldn't, like, I just, I was on the, on the, on the, on the floor in my room and I couldn't even do anything, I couldn't even, like, the, uh, the, the activity of breathing was even taxing for me and um, yeah but the support that I got from um, Kai and my yeah, other I colleagues I should pay you <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the support, as Kai had pointed out, the support that um, we get from people who do experience this and the people who also don't experience this but still respect our experiences really goes a, a really long way. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Mm. We hear you. Um, Gato, you had mentioned something about coping mechanisms. Oh, and like one of it being alcohol. Was that right? Oh, God yeah. Was that right? <laughs> Tell yeah. us more about that. Like, how is it with you, like, choosing coping mechanisms? Uh, and how are they? Are they healthy? Do they, uh, do they even do more harm than good and how is it within like your uh within you navigating it how are the coping mechanisms really helping you cope okay wow i feel like i'm in the spot like (laughs) (laughs) um coping mechanisms i am not gonna say mine are the healthiest uh, because one trigger warning i'm a self-harmer that is not the healthiest of ways to cope. Uh, I have gotten into alcohol, drugs. They're not the healthiest of ways, but we cannot ignore the fact that the community, especially the community that we're in, is into those kinds of coping mechanisms because we do not know better. When I started out, when I had my first depressive episode, I had no one to talk to. I had no one to call, no one to feel like they understood me, no one to feel like, okay, I know I'm going through something, this is where I can go for help, and this is the place they're going to refer me to, or these are the steps they're going to give me. So when I first got my depressive episode, that is the first time I self-harmed, and that is also the first time I tried committing suicide. Uh... So coping mechanisms for me has been a roller coaster of being healthy and unhealthy, but we do not know the balance of healthy and unhealthy. What I consider healthy might not be healthy to you. What you consider healthy might not be healthy to me, because to me, if I cope with alcohol, you cope with meditation. If you tell me you're coping in a way that is unhealthy, I'm going to look at you like, what do you mean? If it works for me, it works for me. Uh, so. Coping mechanisms, <laughs> but I'm going to say mine have not been the healthiest because I have gone from alcohol to weed to orest, drugs to sleeping to avoid my problems to not seeking therapy because I, when you say you're going in, you're going into therapy, people are going to look at you like, hmm? Right? You're gonna be like, why are you not mentally stable? So, therapy is kind of shunned, and that is why I'm very grateful for Leha for doing the three minutes of silence. It's alternative methods of doing therapy. Like, I can release my energy without necessarily doing one to one talk with a therapist. So, coping, coping mechanisms vary. I'm not gonna see mine other healthiest. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You also brought in uh, an aspect of uh, this being stigmatized, you being looked at as Ule Chi. Right. Yeah. Uh, Kai, I do, mm-hmm. want you to like take us through like what are some of the aspects that bring a lot so much stigma around mental health? Okay. Uh, so when I when I talk about mental health for ITGNC persons or this particular community or many marginalized communities we have to look at it from different levels. First of all there's the level of mental health in itself even within the general population is stigmatized. Like when I say my therapy too, I'm still already like um, cheesy. Like why do you need to see a, a counselor, a psychologist and all that? There's that level of stigma. Then there's the double stigma of now you have a mental health condition and also you are ITGNC in a country where you're not per se criminalized, but you're also not very accommodated within the law and the policies that exist. Mm-hmm. So there's double stigma. Then there's the stigma now, and this kind of stigmas, and this they, they now become barriers to access to services. So say what I end up to Madari, first of all, Kwenda Madari just is a normal Kenyan, 
Iko na stigma. Yes. Alafu fike madhare and then useme by the way I'm here because I'm transgender and I think I have gender dysphoria and I think actually um not think I deserve to be put maybe in a ward that affirms my gender. Do you see how mm. that's another level mm, of yeah. of stigma? So generally mental health or um barriers to care I feel like follow on an individual. I think sometimes we go back to blaming the individual. Like for example, why would you choose that coping mechanism, right? Why didn't you go for therapy? Bona drug abuse and you said something about people not knowing any better. Yeah. Right? So if you come especially within our community, you come into a community that's already marginalized. And the co- and the easiest thing that we used to cope ni nini, it's drugs and alcohol. It's in our social spaces. It's in our in our personal spaces. So it's it's all, it's in your face at every time on but that is your coping mechanism and it's not even this joke, it's cheaper than therapy. So, yeah, right. so instead of not. putting the blame on the individual, we need to look at the structural factors. We to come at stigma and discrimination and marginalization that could drive a person kwanza akwe more vulnerable to mental health conditions. Na second, uh, nezo barriers that ako nazo na nataka healthcare na na deserve but has the access, yeah, those particular services. Oh. Also, mm-hmm. uh, this is the kind of thing that I faced. Uh, when you identify as, I identify as GNC, right? And I also did, I have mental health issues. When I first seeked professional help, First thing I got was conversion therapy. Oh, there's also that aspect. Yes. Yeah. If you don't get the right help, or if you're looking for a therapist, and then you get into spaces that I need help, and they offer you help, and then the first thing you sit in that therapy chair and you're like, I am GNC. And they're like, you do not know who you are. And mm-hmm. then they try converting you. So you find yourself, you have gotten yourself into conversion therapy. Not because you wanted to, but because you were seeking assistance. We were seeking assistance, Mm. but you do not have the right resources Mm. to do it. There's that. No, there's that aspect of conversion practices coming in within uh, you wanting to seek seek help, but with the uh, layers of stigma and um, and discrimination that already comes with you being you. And now access to access to mental health services, right? Um I want to take us back to the coping mechanisms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are the, some of the healthy coping mechanisms? And I know this is very this is very, you know, it's a little tashwishi, <laughs> but just to mention but a few. Like then you generally you very well know they might have health, but what healthy for that were healthy for you, that have been healthy, like for people, uh, within the within um, the uh, within the community. <laughs> within the community, like what are some of the things that you may like throughout there, throughout the years? Because I do understand that right now, still, Bado hakuna a lot of limelight in mental health. As much as people do all, do not also know that they are entitled to that, you know, by the virtue of them being <laughs> human, eh, like nini ni izi zenye zimekuwa zikiwak over time, yeah. Chutan zacho na wewe. God damn. Um, what has worked for me? Yeah. Um, I remember the whole of last year, I was really good with um working out, so I had a bike. <laughs> so now I don't have a mic. <laughs> um, I used to go to the gym, but to the economy, gym is Okay, I'm going through it, guys. <laughs> the universe is testing. It's just the being tested. Um, but that being said, I also found um, I wouldn't say a club. I didn't say <laughs> found dead. Um, no, but I I, I found. <laughs> One of my friends and we were able to do this thing we would write poems like um mm. and, and and it really you know lets you explore emotions and all that so there's that and i also um what's it called i do art basically oh. like i paint and all that but i haven't done it this year the year is young 
Yeah, it's, very, yeah, it's very, very young. <laughs> but like um, for me, it was that um, channeling into exercise, channeling into art, whatever form of art, um, traveling. And I know, I know how that sounds, but um, something as simple as going to the museum. Um, I used to have another friend who we used to go to the museum together, and you know, in the museum, there's the, the museum itself, and then there's like the nature tree. So you know, I, I really didn't have the finances to go to Karura. Or Olulua, but I had the finances to go to Upper to Tao, Natalia Kutoka BS, Unapikapo, Museum Hill, Unaingia, and free. So that really held me together. Um, that being said, the last point that I wanted to say is also having um, finding a sense of community. Um, we usually talk about um, your biological family and your chosen family. So I was able to get my chosen family, be it my best friends, my brothers, and all that. So I got that support from them that if I'm going through this, they're aware about what, you know, what bipolar looks like for me. And they give me that support. They're like, wait, bro. So I think that usually keeps me on toes because it reaches a point when you're on psychiatric medication, you get the pill burden. So with the assistance from now that support system, accountability buddies and all that, and setting a support group for people on medication now in Jinxiang, so that we're like always checking in on each other, like, hey, how are you guys doing? How are your drugs taking you? So finding that sense of community is the point I wanted to stress on us. Beautiful. Also, please add that. Oh, Yeah, you have to Kai. Um, no. <laughs> I got my zone now. Thinking about oh, wow. the, the poetry thing. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. I would have seen work for our members. I know maybe some people take for granted talk therapy, but I think it works wonders. And not just for people who have been diagnosed with mental health conditions, but for people generally. Um, I used to have a mentor who used to say, like, if your mind is healthy, then you can conquer anything. And it's okay to just go and, and talk to someone. You don't have to, like, hit rock bottom for you to start mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah. I think that's one of the, yeah, best coping mechanisms that are out there. And, of course, communal support. Uh, they do not necess- It does not necessarily have to take the, the format of a support group. But, like you're saying, alternative methods of communal support, like, even just meeting here for movie nights, for communal events, like, I don't know, like, uh, personally as a marginalized person, I found a lot of, I, I used to find, I still find a lot of strength in my community. Like, I look forward to seeing people. We don't need to do something that capitalism would call significant, but just being there with people, talking to people, and I've seen that also help a lot of people. A lot of people who, in our community, we just ask for a space, like, can I just come and be with people yeah. and that helps them a lot yeah that's yeah. yeah how about you oh you had already told us about it now that you've mentioned uh the safe spaces i also want us to like uh before you wrap up just mention some of the few like okay here's the scenario i have uh mental health issues uh what would you advise me to for example, I, as Susan, come to you, told you, hey, man's even me, I am not, I have been down. I cannot even get a cup off my table. As I say, leave alone kufungua curtains. That's already too much work. Contemplating on kujifunua nitoke kwa bed. Yeah, like what would you advise me to do? I cannot start. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> Carry the burden. No, no. Carry the Let's burden. do rock paper scissors. <laughs> rock paper scissors. Yeah, you. You'll be doing rock paper scissors. Okay, fine, fine. Rock paper scissors. Shoot. Ah. Rock paper scissors. Okay, I'll. I mean, <laughs> all right, you go. Okay. Uh, we're talking about someone who is struggling. Yeah. To get out of that. Yes. As someone who has struggled to even open my eyes, because I'm like. Why did I not die in my sleep? Eh? Why did I not die in my own sleep? I think the only thing someone could have told me is it's okay to feel like you need to exit the world. 
I do not need someone. What I needed at that time is not someone who is convinced in me why I should be alive. Because me, I don't feel like I should be. If I am struggling to get out of bed, I don't need the pity party all. But you make so much effort. You do so much for people. I do not. And I'm tired. I do not want to be there for people. I cannot be there for myself. So you telling me I do so much for people? I know. I cannot do it. So I think I when people tell you if someone calls i think this comes in as psychological first aid when someone calls you like susan i cannot get out of bed your first thought should not be oh but you should the world is so bright no entertain them in that thought tell them ask them what is happening in that moment entertain their thought process because if you can understand me in my blanket can understand me outside of it. Blanket. Yeah. That's a very good way of it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and what is some of the places you can refer this people? Like I, I am so sure our viewers do not know a number of these places where they can go. One, they are most of them are um, sexual and gender minorities. Like to me scare the entire whole, you know, like layers and layers and layers of stigmas in your tiko uko inje like ni wapi wanaanzi ya manze misi jui ndanzi ya wapi because at that time mstate wako wapu wako peke ake anawaskiza right now like mneza mrifa wapi anzi ya wapi um i'm assuming because you're always asking questions and i'm not asking yeah but i was waiting for you to say no i was like <laughs> uh, so, um, as a mental health coordinator in Chinsiangu, and I think you've already understood that Chinsiangu works with gender minorities. Um, the program is usually run like this: you, you know, reach out to us. Yes, I'm a uh, gender minority, and these are the needs that I need. But before we even, you know, because in the back of their heads, uh, trans and gender diverse persons, they usually like, I just want to transition. Everything will be fine. But now that's the thing: you transition, and you still haven't dealt with. The underlying issues, the stigma, and discrimination you've gone through from family to the religious sector to you know school, you haven't dealt with that. So before anyone transitions, we do what? We refer them to our therapist, and it's usually free of charge because that's basically in our mandate to provide um, psychosocial support for our members. You go through therapy, and you know you get diagnosed with what um, mental illness you have. Let me use myself as an example. So I come here at Jinsi Yangu and I'm like, yes, I need to transition to fix everything. But I started transitioning, my social transitioning, my legal transitioning, but I still had like underlying issues, you know, the mood disorder and so on and so forth, dealing with family. And I was advised, Jinsi Yangu offers therapy. So I started therapy. And a year into it, my therapist was like, you know what, Tuck, I think I should refer you to a psychiatrist. Jinsi Yangu still um, also partners with um, stakeholders, psychiatric stakeholders. Um, so I went to the psychiatrist, got the psychiatric needs that I had. And um, yeah, so, you know, you start from therapy, the therapist takes you through it, you go through the psychiatric attention and, you know, you get onto medication, we provide you with medication and you still get that sense of community. I think I spoke about this earlier in, in the video when I was saying that there is a support group for people who are in psychiatric medication, because it's it, it's a whole roller coaster, dealing with your body coming to terms with there's a new drug being introduced to your body, dealing with your family seeing you every morning. Kuto pap ona shanga hizo sinjuku hizo ni hizo ni mada hizo ni mada zani so having to deal with that, having a safe space for you to actually talk about you know what, it's okay, I'm on medication, some of the medications I take, these are the symptoms. How you, how do you deal with those symptoms when you have those medications? So for gender diverse persons, it's just reaching out and saying, this is what I'm going through. And there's no weakness in reaching out. There's no, you are not weak because you have a mental illness. And I think the society has that stigma. Yeah, because we are cheesy, we are not cheesy, but look at us, we sit here in front of you, okay, accept it. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we sit here and we are, you know, functioning members of the society because yeah. we reached out. And it, oh, it's also okay not to reach out to psychiatric um, assistants, but having that sort of community, as we have already spoken about. Yeah. Oh, my God, you're only speaking in Kobe. You're okay. I, 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 I can't Anyone has a parting shot? Because I do. I was mm -hmm. okay. Go ahead. I go ahead. Yes, now we can start and then we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in a world where you can be anything, just be kind. Honestly, people are really going through it. Just be kind. You never know what this person is going through. You don't need to add it to add more salt on the injury yeah uh, I think it's really cool that's it that's well it's a wrap until next time bye, bye.